This just ahead tonight on Daily Iowa TV. Wondering about that hawk alert you got earlier today? Daily Iowa TV was on the scene and has the latest information coming up. And as sexual assault continues to be a campus issue, we'll give you the updates on the university's efforts to prevent it as the new school year starts. And coming up in sports, University of Iowa football coaches meet with the media. All that and more coming up next. You're watching Daily Iowa TV. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Coble and I'm Katie Sextro. What should have been a normal first day back to classes instead led to the evacuation of a campus building. Daily Iowa TV was the first on the scene to get the latest on today's UI Hawk Alert. It was here at Jessup Hall where a suspicious student left a backpack in the president's office. The individual has been detained and staff and students have been evacuated. The Johnson County Bomb Squad is still investigating. Now bringing you back to the scene. According to UI spokeswoman Janine Beck, the student began acting erratic at 1055 in Phillips Hall. University police was called. They determined it was important to secure the scene, check the backpacks. They did have uh, the bomb squad come in. They've evacuated the building to make sure that everyone is safe. It's probably an abundance of caution, but at this point, we need to take precaution. Approximately at 11, the same student exhibited suspicious behavior in Jessup Hall, along with leaving his backpack in the conference room. At 11.15, we saw police running across the Pentecost towards Jessup Hall and students started to evacuate the building. Uh, we all started filing out and we saw police in the building and we just decided to get out of there as quickly as possible. Yeah, especially once I saw the police start running around, it felt real. At around 11.30, the police expanded their perimeter to cover half of the Pentecost. By 1.40, we saw a bomb squad robot outside of Jessup Hall. This is Alara Bartlett reporting from the Pentecrest for Daily Iowan TV. The Hawk Alert was lifted around 2.30 p.m. today. To get a full look at the timeline of events, you can go to dailyiowan.com. Despite the craziness of the Hawk Alert, students did return to classes this morning. Most students seemed enthusiastic to be back on campus. Our own Afe Ayunro went out to see how everyone's first day back to school went. It's a beautiful day. I've had yeah. a lot of classes. I'm having a good time. It's been like the first year of college where I'm not super freaked out. Like I feel pretty prepared and like I kind of know what's going on. So it took a couple years, but um, I don't know. I think that's nice to just be on campus and feel like you know what's going on. It was nice to visit home, but uh, there's nothing quite like being back on campus. I'm, I'm pretty excited to uh, just sort of meet uh, my old friends and also hopefully make some new ones. Curious about what goes on inside the UI power plant? Tomorrow, the University of Iowa will hold tours as a part of the Biomass Fuel Field Day. The project received the Iowa Governor's Environmental Excellence Award this summer. Tomorrow's event and the tours will allow locals to learn more about the project's goals, which include increasing efficiency for UI power plants and educating the public on biomass energy. Sexual assault is an issue that impacts students on many college campuses, including the UI. I went out earlier today to learn about what UI officials are doing to prevent sexual assault and how they hope to empower survivors for the upcoming school year. As the fall semester begins, so does the fight to prevent sexual assault across campus. The most recent sexual misconduct took place at a construction site near the Iowa River. Students are informed whenever a sexual abuse has been reported by receiving a crime alert from the University of Iowa's Department of Public Safety. One resource on campus is continuing its fight to prevent sexual assault and heal the survivors of these crimes. The Women's Resource and Action Center is an organization that helps both men and women combat sexual abuse. All of us are likely to be in the situation where we can see something developing in a way that could be harmful. And that's where we can intervene and prevent something bad from happening to begin with. Other sexual assault preventative resources include RVAP, It's On Us, and events sponsored by the WRAC, 
such as Take Back the Night. Sexual assault continues to be an important issue at the University of Iowa, but it's one that can be prevented. Enjoy your time here and keep your eyes open and look out for each other. Be that hawk who helps the other hawk. And secondly, if you need help, don't be afraid to ask for it. It's here for you. For more information about the Women's Resource and Action Center and other sexual assault preventative programs, you can visit www.wrac.uiowa.edu. Tickets went on sale Monday for the Kevin Hart Show. The comedian will be on campus in October. Hundreds of students lined up to buy tickets at the discounted price of $25. Tickets for the general public are $75. Hart will make his appearance on October 3rd in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Well, I don't know about you, Katie, but I had to wear a jacket on my way to classes today. I know. I wore shorts, and I immediately regretted that decision. I would say it's pretty cold for an August day, but let's toss it over to Alyssa Guzman, who will give us the weather report. You know, Megan, it was a bit chilly for the first day of school, but this cold weather won't be here for long. Tuesday morning, we'll start things off in the low 60s, then the afternoon will warm up and we should see some low 70s. The evening will cool back down into the mid 60s and we'll continue to see clear skies. Taking a look at the rest of the week, Wednesday and Thursday we'll see highs in the upper 70s and clear skies. However, heading into the weekend, have your umbrella and rain boots ready because we're expecting some scattered thunderstorms. Sunday, things should clear back up with highs in the 80s, and Monday will stay that way with highs reaching almost 90. That's all I have for you here in the weather studio. Hope you had a great first day of classes, Hawkeyes. Back to you, Megan and Katie. And now for some news outside of Iowa. Yesterday, we brought you a story on rising tensions between North and South Korea. Around 11 Monday local time, an agreement was declared between the two countries. In this agreement, South Korea will end the anti-North Korea broadcast. Both states are working to reunite families separated by the Korean War by September. This agreement comes following the second round of negotiations that started Saturday. Bringing it back to the U.S., there was trouble on Wall Street Monday morning. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeted in a matter of seconds. The drop followed the fall of Chinese stocks. In addition to the stalling growth in China's markets, the falling oil prices are also a concern. The market was able to make a small recovery, but the day will not end without some loss. 2016 presidential candidate Donald Trump commented on the event. He tweeted, quote, Markets are crashing, all caused by poor planning and allowing China and Asia to dictate the agenda. This could get very messy. Vote Trump. Daily Iowan TV will continue to update you on the stock market's progress in the days to come. Now let's toss it over to the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio where Austin Luz and Katie Reber are standing by with the latest in Hawkeye athletics. Thanks ladies. Hawkeye football coaching staff met with the media today. And with the college football season less than two weeks away, things are starting to heat up for the Hawkeyes and their coaches. Senior defensive lineman Drew Ott is expected to be the anchor of this 2015 Hawkeye defense. And defensive coordinator Phil Parker said that Ott operates more on his actions speaking louder than his words when leading the younger players. The guy has great effort and he's tough and he runs and you know he's just a good guy. Not very vocal, but I mean just the way he plays, uh, people should respect that. And on the other side of the ball, the offensive line has been a huge topic of conversation this offseason. You'll be seeing a few unfamiliar faces stepping up to fill the void of former Hawkeye tackle Brandon Scharf. But head coach Kirk Ferentz doesn't seem to be worried about those younger players. To replace Brandon Scharf, uh, you know, he's one of the best players ever to play at this university. So, that, you know, that, that's totally off the radar. What he has to worry about is just being the best he can be. And, I, I personally think that's going to be a pretty good player, and we feel the same way about Ike and Cole. I think all three of these guys have really, really positive futures. And we continue to catch you up on what's going on across Hawkeye football. We will send you over to Daily Iowa TV sports reporter Taylor Brooks, who takes us inside a group of Hawkeyes that are known to be legendary. Katie and Austin, the two offensive positions we dig into on this Monday night, both had the potential to make a key difference. Check it out. Iowa's Tavon Smith might have broke New York Giants wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr.'s world record for one-handed catches, but he's focused on one thing and one thing only. I'm, I'm critiquing everything I do. When I drop, if I drop a pass, 
I'm, I'm down doing push-ups if somebody else drops a pass. I'm, I'm, I'm making sure they do theirs. And, I mean, we just got to make sure we're getting better every day and do, doing what we got to do to be successful as an offense. And head coach Kirk Ferentz seems to agree with the veteran. It starts with, with a guy like Devon. I'm not picking him up. But uh, anybody that's played out there, Austin Blythe, Jordan Lomax, Drew Ott, if those guys don't play better this year than last year, that's, that's going to be an issue. Smith led the team last year in receiving yards with 596. He's the go-to for this receiving game, but behind him stands Matt Vandenberg and Jake Hillier with the same mindset. You know, I'm not really too concerned on uh, exactly what my role is as far as, um, you know, personal goals and things like that, just as long as whatever coach says, as long as I'm on the field and I'm doing uh, what needs to be done to help the team win. With a lack of a throwing presence in the Iowa football realm, there's no doubt these receivers want the ball more with starting QB C.J. Beathard. But if the ball isn't being launched down the field, their priorities lie somewhere else. I got to make sure I'm blocking. If the ball's not coming to me and he's running, I got to make sure he doesn't get hit pretty hard. Sticking with the pass game and more of a responsibility with blocking, we go to Iowa's tight ends. The stellar group, who once composed of the names like C.J. Fedorowicz and Ray Hamilton, has an era in Iowa football history. But this year, it's no different. The name of George Kittle might not be recognized by some, but will be soon enough. The 235-pound Oklahoma native is stepping into a bigger role this season. But to me, he's, he's becoming a veteran player, if you will. And the biggest thing is attitude has just been great. He's really been focused. He's been able to remain focused. His role plays a bigger part as Jake Doozy is out to an injury, but is expected to return by late September. It's coming along good. It's a lot, going a lot faster than they thought originally. So I just got to keep working every day, keep coming in, get treatment and uh, hopefully I'll be out there in no time. With these two positions compiled of talent and the arm of C.J. Beathard in the pocket, the throw game could be one to watch for. We continue Tuesday night with the offensive line and who you will be seeing doing most of the blocking. Katie, what's going on with field hockey? Iowa field hockey has long been known as one of the finest programs in the country. With much controversy last year surrounding the firing of former head coach Tracy Griesbaum, the Hawks are trying to look forward as their season starts up in just five days. I caught up with the Hawks at Media Day earlier this week. Before heading to the 2015 season opener in Louisville, Kentucky, the Iowa field hockey team held their media day last Thursday at Grant Field, where head coach Lisa Salucci expressed her excitement for new team leaders to step up this season. I mean, Stephanie Norlander, returning All-American as well, all Big Ten selection, a member of the Canadian senior team, she absolutely is going to be our go-to player on the field with the most experience we have. Um, so she, absolutely she will be stepping up into a big leadership role and will be have be called on to play probably a couple different positions. Unfortunately, we will not be seeing a familiar face star forward Natalie Cafone as she suffered a shoulder injury at the end of spring practices. However, as Chandler Akers explains, her sideline teammate is never far from the field. She's a, even a big more of a contributor on the sidelines, I think. Her voice is always heard and she's always like giving us input on the drills and everything. I don't think we're going to miss her, but she's still on the team. She's still helping us every day. Along with Akers, Mallory Lefkowitz is ready to lead the team. This returning starter is grateful for all of Cofone's shaping leadership. I definitely think she taught me a lot, and I think that uh, returning is definitely, I'm definitely going to have to step up, but definitely came from her, and I want to do it for the team and for her. Aside from the veterans of the team, the freshmen are also feeling like a part of the squad. We've been doing a lot of team activities and stuff like that, and they've been really good about including us in everything that we've been doing. Despite Natalie Cofone's season-ending shoulder injury, Coach Salucci and her team are ready for this 2015 season, focusing on new leaders and developing talent. This is Katie Reber, Daily Island TV Sports. The Hawkeyes will travel to Wake Forest later this week to take on the Demon Deacons in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And that's all we have for today, but be sure to tune in tomorrow where we take a look at the Iowa volleyball team as they are fresh out of media day and we also get a checkup on the offensive line for the Iowa football team. Megan and Katie, back to you. Well, that's all we have for you tonight on Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check out tomorrow's edition of the Daily Iowan for more coverage on today's Hawk Alert. Thanks for watching. From us to you, go Hawks and good night. <laughs>